next and we'll begin discussing the financial aspects of the plan. Um, at our mid-month meeting next month on August 9th, we will be receiving a, a more comprehensive update of this plan and, and where we're going with that. So that'll be a good time for questions and comments of uh, the commission for that. Um, MPO staff and consultants are continuing to work on the Lawrence Loop alignment study. They are continuing to explore potential alignments between the missing sections of the Lawrence Loop, um, the shared use plan from uh, path from Burroughs Creek Trail to Bircham Park and the west side of uh, Chandra Shaw Trail to the Peterson Road shared use path. Um, next step is for the consultant to propose alignment options and release a uh, public survey. So we'll continue to update you on that as far as the Lawrence Loop goes. Also, the MPO staff and the <coughs> consultant are working on the transit center location analysis. And as you know, that, that's been an ongoing project they've worked on and, and we've um, entered into an agreement with the consultant um, to kick off a steering committee meeting um, and really start working on potential transit location centers. So I think down the road, we'll, be, we'll see that as it proceeds. Um, and I'll continue to update you on that as, as that study continues. Uh, another study that the MPO staff's working on is a safety analysis of identifying hotspots for crash sites for all modes of transportation. And they'll be working with KDOT um, and a consultant to identify those and gather data. Um, and with the plan of trying to improve any of those areas, they're more prone to accidents. That's really about it from the MPO, but I'll continue to keep you updated as we proceed. Thank you, Commissioner Culver. Any discussion or questions for Commissioner Culver on the MPO report? All right, any further committee reports for us to receive? And we want to communications. Are there any written communications not shown in our packet tonight? No, sir. Any communication from staff, planning commissioners, or other commissioners? Uh, I would note, Mr. Chairman, uh, that we'd like to maybe review a couple of points in the mid month calendar and the retreat at the end of tonight's meeting. For you. I might also just add that a committee that is scheduled to meet next Monday is the Horizon 2020 Steering Committee. The, uh, so we'll have maybe an update the next time we all meet together, but we're going to be asking them to look at a draft plan that has been posted to their agenda. So if you get anxious, you might start looking at the draft plan that uh, Mr. Crick has led the way on writing up as a like really a new comprehensive plan for the community um, and we're also going to be asking that committee to determine help us determine the public process to get input from the public on that new plan including um, cities and, and rural um, ways to get input from from folks so anyway that's yet to come it's going to be a pretty big <coughs> work uh, load issue for us and for the Planning Commission throughout the, the fall Thank you. Are there any uh, written actions of waiver requests or determinations from the city engineer? No, sir. Uh, beneath commissioners, care to make any ex parte communications disclosures? Uh, any declarations of abstentions on any agenda item tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to our first agenda item. First, I'd like to take a moment to welcome our newest commissioner, uh, Luke Sinclair, to the Planning Commission. Uh, we have another planning commissioner, Erin uh, Payton, who could not be here tonight, but she hopefully will join us uh, next month. With that, let's move on to item number one, a preliminary plat in Cedar Grove subdivision. Good evening, Jeff Crick with the City County Planning Office, filling in for Sandy, so there's no confusion, just pinch hitting tonight. The item before you this evening is a preliminary plat for the Cedar Grove subdivision. Uh, you've seen this one before in a couple of different application processes. It's really at the intersection of Inverness and Wakarusa Drive. The area outlined in pink on the screen there is the part in question this evening. And to kind of give you a reference of what it looks like in space, uh, we went ahead and superimposed the plat onto the aerial image so you can kind of see how the streets and the lines will line up with what's already on the ground there to see it right now. The three items you saw previously were two rezoning applications and a comprehensive plan amendment that would have advised Chapter 7, which was the old West Orient Industrial Node, and modify that one. To kind of give you an update on what's going on with that one, these cases are currently scheduled for first reading at City Commission on August 1st, it'll be coming very soon. 
So those were held up in relation to the preliminary plat. The commission didn't want to see those items until the plat had been given its due course. So the plat this evening includes one industrial lot of about five acres. So it would be zoned for IBP, 93 residential lots, 10 of which would be zoned for RM12D, which is the city's duplex zoning. One recommendation that staff has of the preliminary plat is the green space you see going around the north and the western lines of the plat here. This would equate to about a 40-foot easement combination of utility and a landscape easement. The uh, reason we can't quite nail down which easement is which quite yet is because the public improvement plans have not been submitted and approved, so we don't know the depth of the sewer runs. The depth of those runs will then trigger how much easement is required for sewer. What we do recommend is that the differential of those, whatever the balance is, that the sewer is not encompassing, the landscape easement would encompass for a total of 40 feet around all the north and the western sides. This would mimic the average setback that you would see in a full IBP zoning category. So this will give some buffer to the existing residents that are along this way here. It would have been very similar to an IBP zoning if it would have come through. So you can see here, this is a sanitary sewer line easement that's running down that side. And to give you an idea of what that will end up encompassing is the two green spaces you see there on either side is an additional that would span out to 40 feet. So between currently platted line to that easement is about 15 feet. The easement itself is about 15 feet as proposed. And then you can see the addition on the right-hand side there of what a 40-foot easement would totally encumber in this position. Also to note on the plat there, there's a pedestrian connection kind of going off to the southwest there. So if an extension ever occurs to the trail system that is just off the screen to the left there, that would be available for the residents. There's also a proposed landscape easement that will be going around the RM12D portion to give buffer to both them and also to the residents of the Ferraris 7 that are surrounded. It also gives them a little bit of an added buffer to the IPP zoning to the south there. So when the industrial development does occur of an office complex, there's a little bit of an added green space already encumbered in the plat. Staff recommends the approval of the plat subject to the revised drawing, and you can see the details of it here. The total easement dedication to be 40 feet the easement of not to exceed 25 feet for utilities and not to exceed 15 feet in total for the landscape easement. And with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Jeff. This is a non-public hearing item, but is there anybody in the public who would like to speak on this item tonight? Uh, good evening, commissioners. Jason Hoskinson. I'm an engineer with BG Consultants. We submitted the application for the preliminary plat. Uh, I'll help you keep your meeting short. I really don't have anything to add beyond what was in the application. I think the staff's done a great job there, but I would like to uh, have an opportunity to address any questions or, or uh, concerns that the commission has during the discussion. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. I'd like to know if we have any. Um, and then this would be the public hearing item, which we would then close and uh, bring it up here for discussion or questions or motion. The, the buffer or the extra easement area, both around the total perimeter and then also between the duplex and, and the other residential, single residential, is that, is that pretty typical or is that, it seems to be above and beyond maybe what is typically asked for? That's correct. It is a little bit above and beyond. Mm -hmm. To kind of give a little bit of a differential to what has occurred since it was supposed to be an industrial park by nature, mm -hmm. rezoning is putting it down to residential, but it gives the residents that have kind of had some issues with the zoning at the first go around. It gives them a little bit of added buffer to kind of comfort that space off. And it's, it's not an abnormal item in a plat, it's just a little different to see it on this back side of a plat instead of being on the front or towards a major thoroughfare. And that the applicant was comfortable with that? Thank you. Commissioner Parker? Well, this is just for my enlightenment. You made a statement about the depth of the sewer had something to do with the, the easement size. Right. How, do, how do those two relate to, together? The, the deeper the sewer runs, the more easement is usually required by the utilities department in case of servicing it. So if it's a very shallow run, the easements are usually very narrow because they don't need to get larger equipment in there to reach down that deep to get the sewer. So as it starts to decline, as the gravity sewer goes down, the easement tends to widen out. So it kind of works in a, a very typical fashion. Uh, the old engineer told me for every foot you go down, you need a foot and a half wide to make it work. I don't know if that's an old adage or not, if that was just how he did his math, but 
So it's kind of a, you know, for every foot down, you need about a foot and a half to make it kind of be able to access it should something go wrong. Thanks. Commissioner Sands. Uh, the uh, pedestrian easement, uh, that connects to the, uh, the gas easement, right? That yeah, that would be the, the high pressure gas easement that's in plat. Okay. Um, and so then there was a, recall something in the report about um, not knowing how that was going to be constructed or who's going to have responsibility was it on, a, on paving or connecting one to the other. Correct. Okay. Um, so then my, I guess my final question is, but there's not going to be any paving going on on that gas easement or is there? It depends on kind of how Parks and Rec maybe works out a deal with the owner of the easement to kind of put the trail through there. Okay. It's, it's kind of been what's occurred to the north west of it that you kind of see coming off the screen right there. Um, that would be something that would come through with public improvements and with Parks and Rec as they start to take a look at those items. Okay, so it may not be paved as a sidewalk or multi-use path, but it might be graveled or something to kind of go with the trail and to Vicker? I, yeah, it, I believe the Victor is mostly paved, Most though, so it may be in the same line, but I can't speak for Parks and Rec at this time. I think it depends on if there's a prohibition or rule that the gas company has about um, hard surfacing over that easement. Okay, I just I just wanted to make sure I didn't read that, that you know, someone was going to pave about okay. 50 feet of sidewalk that starts nowhere and goes nowhere. Yeah, no, the, the intent is to get a connection to the Victor Some form through of connection. There. And we think that's feasible, but there's some details to work out. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions or discussions? We'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Commissioner Sands. I'd like to re recommend approval of the preliminary plat for Cedar Grove subdivision subject to the following condition that submission of a revised preliminary plat drawing to show utility easement along the north and west property lines does not exceed 25 feet and an adjacent parallel landscape easement does not exceed 15 feet for a total easement area dedication of 40 feet per staff approval. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. Sure. Commissioner Weaver, I uh, should note that we are the approving body on this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Motion carries seven zero. Thank you. Item two, a final development plan for six walk phase two. Hello again. Item, this item is for a final development plan at the six walk addition of phase two. Uh, you may all know it better as the northwest corner of six and Wakarusa Street. The item this evening is outlined in blue as you can see there. It's currently comprised of two parcels which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. Uh, the proposal is for a 10,770 square foot retail building that will be five tenant bays. will contain some outdoor dining and about approximately 85 parking spaces as it is lined out right now. You can see here that this is the associated application will be that there's two parcels kind of roughly outlined, one in red and one in green here. The minor subdivision that we have in place with the office currently is to combine these two for this purposes of this final development plan. So currently with the final development plan that's already been adopted, there are two buildings in play here. And the red one you can see here is about 1,800 square feet. And there's another building in green there that's about 7,400 square feet for a total of 9,200 square feet in total. It's currently proposed in the final development plan that's adopted. The application before you this evening does not include the building to the north kind of right here. It is not as part of this final development plan at this time. When that building comes forward, it will be another application before the Planning Commission. So that one is a freestanding application that may come in in the future. The one building this evening is just going to be a single building, so it takes the square footages of the other two buildings, combines them into one, and that is the proposal this evening. So the f I'm kind of give you a rough idea of what it looks like. The parking lot there is hatched in gray. The building is right here, kind of in a white space. It's a little difficult to see. 
And that is what it will kind of look like on the side there. We impose this one also into the arrow so you can kind of get a feel of what it will look like having kind of proposed the art. So part of the final development plan includes a review of this for the community design manual here. As you can see from the bottom left indicator there, this would be the view of the building from 6th Street as proposed. This would be the view from approximately Overland Drive from the north. You can kind of see there is some corner articulation going on on the far left and far right hand side of the screens. This would be from the Congressional Drive from the west side and also from the east side. So it has a very similar profile on both of its corners. And to give you an idea of what it will look like a little bit in its taller view, the isometric here gives you a pretty good idea of the way the building is articulated. Staff recommends approval of the building subject to a couple of conditions. First, the recording of the minor subdivision that I mentioned earlier, and also the completion of a performance site plan agreement with the office here. We also recommend changing the building's architectural design by including cornices and that lifted element that you saw at the corners of the building and mimicking that to the 6th Street side. Those big kind of lifts that you see right on this, right here in front of you, should be mimicked onto the 6th Street side to give the building a little bit of balance, bring it in more in line with the community design manual, and also put that articulation forward to 6th Street so that the back of the building has equal massing in front as the other one side does. And also to include and revise the outdoor dining into the parking table, which is not done at the plan before you this evening. And with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have on this project. Thanks, Jeff. Is the applicant here and wishing to say anything? No? All Mr. right. Chairman, yep. I might just add. In case you see this in the, in the newspaper or media, that we have an association with a future final development plan to the north. Um, we've received a request to break access on 6th Street mm -hmm. uh, for right in only there. It's kind of mid-block on 6th Street into the Walmart lot. Mm -hmm. We have to process that through the city commission first um, because there's a specific city code that speaks to access on 6th Street from Wakarusa over to the K-10 Highway. When that street was developed to urban standards, access management was put, a high, was, was, there was a high value on access management. So there's an actual code standard in the city code that speaks to access management. All other developments come in and we apply the, the city's typical access management standards to those developments, but this is actual city code. So we have to go um, put forth between, before the city commission a code amendment to allow them the opportunity to work on that final development plan in the future, um, probably very near future, to bring to the planning commission with an access break on 6th Street. So I just wanted you to know that that that's in the works as well. You might see that in the media um, between now and the time you, you see the final development plan and wonder if it was connected to this southern plan. It really isn't. This plan works whether or not the write-in gets approved, as, as I understand it, but it is a part of the future development plan. Commissioner Cole. Just to, to follow up on that for clarity, this application does not have anything to do with an access break to 6th correct. Street, correct? Correct. That okay. access break would actually happen on the Walmart lot, so there'll be a subdivision uh, application and all the necessary applications to accommodate that access break. Okay. Uh, but this this does not include it and stands alone. Okay. As it currently stands, access would be taken from Overland. Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Any further discussion, Commissioner yes, Willie? Yes, sir. So we've gone from two smaller buildings that added up to 9,200 square feet to one larger building that's 10,700 or so. Um, ha have we increased any green space or anything to offset that we've got a larger building square footage? What yeah. have we gained by it? Yeah, green space is, is one of the bigger ones. You're gonna get a little bit more on the side there. We've also lost a drive-through. The other final development plan one's been adopted at the drive-through component. This one does not have a drive-through component, so there's a little mm -hmm. bit of a modification in that respect. Um, really it's the consolidation of the two buildings in there and then it, the reserve of the balance for the third building when it comes in was a key aspect of that one. There is a nodal plan in effect on this corner and the retail cap is in effect from that nodal plan so the balance of the retail space was reserved for that other building. So nothing will change as far as the retail cap as it's proposed right now. So we have a balance, we do have the more, more that green space and then that drive-through drops off. 
and then if we refigure the the parking plan to include the um, outdoor dining area will we lose some of that green space will we need more parking when we see this again it may need a little bit more parking but it wouldn't be too substantial is from my understanding of it i don't know if the full detail of the outdoor dining has been completely articulated at this time but mm -hmm. something we can take into review and make sure there is some balance to that effect okay Further questions? Commissioner Carpenter? Do we still have a square footage retail cap at this intersection? We do. Mm -hmm. And what, where are we? When you add this one in, where are we on reaching that cap? With accounting for the balance of the other one, it is done. It's <laughs> his peak. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. And I, I guess this, this access, that's an artifact from the Bauer Farms access off of the state highway back at that time? Is that where that restriction came from? Well, the access management actually starts at Wakarusa uh -huh. and goes west toward K-10. So Bauer Farm was just outside of the right. access management developed for west of six, West 6th Street development. Um, Bauer Farm gained its access points through all the proper channels, through platting and final development planning. Okay. Am I answering your question? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to put this in historical context because I remember the big arguments at the Planning Commission back then about access points. It, and a, a lot of that dealt with 31st and Iowa development at the time, but we got other things were put in place around that time. Yeah, too. I mean, just to speak for a minute about the, the, the big, big picture and putting it all in context, a lot of our current codes are in response to 23rd Street, um, decades worth of kind of linear commercial development and driveways to every lot. And so now we, our concepts for nodal commercial development and higher access management standards are affecting a lot of this development. Um, and so when you get west of Iowa, you'll find that we're more sort of that Avenue Boulevard, Clinton Parkway is a pretty easy road to get get through pretty quickly. Um, 23rd Street is better than, or, or 6th Street West is, is better than 23rd Street or 6th Street East of Iowa, those kinds of things. And so the pendulum has sort of swung that way. And in fact, we've, uh, with uh, participation of KDOT funds, have worked quite a, quite a lot to consolidate driveways on 23rd Street, East 23rd Street. So I don't know if you've noticed over time, but there's, I don't know, 10 or more maybe points there where as development has redevelopment has occurred we've worked with owners using some funds from the state and even some local and developer participation to combine or eliminate driveways altogether on east 23rd street along with my favorite type of sign the pole signs so 23rd street over time has really changed so. thank you <clears throat> Commissioner Sands. Uh, Commissioner Carpenter, when you're when you're talking about the retail space of the two buildings, you said both buildings. Are you talking about this one that's on FDP and then the one that's supposed to go to the north? Okay, yeah. so so the one that's the one that's the ten thousand square foot or nine thousand square foot building that we're talking about today, plus the future potential addition of the other one, puts it at the retail cap. Correct. Okay, I just weren't sure if you were referencing Walmart or something else in that. No, I just know that there. Were there were retail caps for mm -hmm. those intersections up there and they've been nudged around and played with over time and just wondered where we were with those mm -hmm. numbers now. The, the last adjustment that we did accounted for the three buildings that are in the currently adopted final development plans. That is where that cap number came from and it was basically zeroed out at that effect. So rearranging the buildings doesn't affect the cap in any way, just as long as that number totals out. Mm -hmm. Now certain things may not necessarily be retail in their thing, like a, a dentist office is in a retail establishment, so it doesn't run into that same limit as a, a restaurant will. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the caps are still in place, and this would, if everything was to go retail, it would hit that mark. And, and just to answer your question, the, the, the question was really, we're not going to have a future request that's going to want us to bump that above what we have in place as a cap, and the answer was we're not. So. But it could come anyway, of course. But <clears throat> you won't get that request with what we understand is coming with this kind of near-term future right. development or final development plan. 
But, um, I mean, interestingly, as, as specific uses even change out of buildings, we have to go back to that cap and determine if it's retail or not to determine if they can take over a tenant space. Commissioner Wheeler. So in the absence of an applicant on this, I'll, I'll ask you that the design elements to um, beef up the profile that faces 6th Street, is that something that's already been discussed with the applicant? And you know, as far as, uh, it seems fairly specific what, you know, what we've asked for in terms of a design element. Do they have some room to play with that to accomplish what you're asking for and yet satisfy their own architectural interests? Kind of doing the fill in here, so I can't say I've been a privy to every conversation that's occurred, <laughs> but as far as my understanding is, they have been apprised of that request as part of the final vote, but they have not made any, any motion that that is a, a negative item for them at this point in time. They're pretty early along in the design phase, so catching this at this point is something that's easier done than if it was coming out of the ground already. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? Motion? Mr. Sands. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to make a motion to approve the final development plan for six walk edition phase two based upon the findings of fact presented in the body of the SAP report and subject to the conditions enumerated one through four. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Culver. Further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Same sign, seven zero. All right. On to our first miscellaneous item. <coughs> A variance request. Even Catherine. Mm -hmm. Get this pulled up here. <coughs> So I'm here before you tonight to bring a miscellaneous item um, that's associated with a minor subdivision that we currently have in review. Um, typically, minor subdivisions are administratively approved and anything that would change easements or right of way would go before city commission. Um, why it's before you tonight is that any variance to the subdivision design um, standards would come before the planning commission and require approval from this body. Um, as part of this minor subdivision application, um, the applicant is requesting um, some variances for lot two, the proposed lot two. Um, there's three lots currently there in existence. Um, for the current zoning, which is R7, the minimum requirements for a lot area are 7,000 square feet and for a lot width are 60 feet. They are asking for a reduction um, for lot two. Um, from the 7,000 to 5,730-ish to um, and a 60, from the 60-foot width requirement to 46 wide. Currently the lot, the three lots that are there are 40, they're already under the standards, which is 40 foot wide by approximately 125 feet, so that's a total lot area of 5,000 square feet. They are trying to accomplish a double size lot and a single size lot, um, and so their request is um, basically they are improving what is currently there as far as meeting the standards and maintaining the intent of the subdivision regulations. Um, just to show you kind of what they're proposing, they are proposing to combine the two north lots into one double sized lot and then adjust the lot line of the remaining small lot to the south uh, a bit north to increase that a little bit. Um, to accommodate that 46 uh, foot width. And so with this minor subdivision, they require variances to those to accomplish that. So that's what's before you tonight to consider the variances in association with this minor subdivision request. Okay, All right. Stand for any question. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Make him say a few words. <laughs> uh, good evening, Commissioners. Uh, I see a new face. This is all. Introduce myself. I'm Dean Grove with Grove Engineering. Um, I think Catherine did a fine job uh, kind of explaining it to you. And I just want to kind of reiterate that as she mentions this improving, you know, how we, if it's not as wide, why are we improving the lot? That 
uh, what is lot 188, uh, a Fairfax addition could remain out of this minor sub and just combine the two north one. Uh, but the one that the person that's owning the south lot, you know, has a footprint that said, hey, if I just got a little more than the 40 feet, it just makes it a little bit nicer. Um, but they didn't want to take the whole 60 feet. So it was either, you know, if it's declined, it would be a 40 foot lot and then combining the two or give a little bit to the south. So I, I, I don't know that I'm going to explain that any more than Catherine did, but I you know, still got questions. I'd be happy to do that. And I don't have any other presentation, but I'll be happy to answer questions. All right. Thank you. If we have any. So this is a, is this a public hearing item? It's not? Okay. Then. Okay. Then seeing no public. Let's bring it back up here to the commission for questions, comments, or motions. question for the applicant. Yes, Commissioner Calder. Sir Grobing, and you may have just explain it, just want to make sure I understand it, but the <coughs> top two lots there, are they under single ownership? Um, yes. Okay, and then the most southern lot is also a different yeah. ownership. Okay. Now, let me back up. They were under one ownership, and one person wanted the south lot plus a little bit and somebody else wanted the north lot so okay. right now and it's actually changed hands in the midst of okay. this process so the ultimate i guess owners or next owners uh has changed but yeah it would be the north okay. now, just where that line is okay. when we're done and there there was no direction towards trying to split that into two lots instead of having it's just with the owner two with the north, equal lots i guess north the double lot and but they okay. were willing to give the and, and again they went together as a group or you know okay kind of decided what they wanted ahead of time and so uh, that if he could get a little more in that south lot would make it a little more uh, pleasing than you know the 40-foot lots okay all right yeah. thank you any further discussion Motion. Yes, Commissioner Sinclair. Just to be clear, the way the lots are currently set up, they're non conforming with the subdivision regulations? Yes. Correct. Yes. Currently, they are 40 foot wide uh, by 125 feet, which is 5,000 square feet. So, both the width and the lot area is currently non compliant with our, what would be required in today's code. I will say, though, that the area, and it's in your staff report, the area is a mix. Um, there are a lot of the narrow 40-foot lots, as well as combined two lots, three lots that are combined in one parcel. It's a pretty even mix throughout that three-block area. And so this doesn't bring it fully compliant unless the need to request a variance to the planning commission for the, for the lot width standard. It's going toward compliance, but not quite. Mr. Sands. So lot two is going to be 46 feet wide also, which is going to still be under. So we're taking three and we're making one big one and one slightly larger one. No, it is slightly larger, still non-conforming, hence the need for a variance. Okay. But it's an improvement. Yeah. yeah. The alternative is they could still do the lot combination and leave lot two at less than at its, at its current yeah, width, which is even narrower than what they're seeking mm -hmm. with this application. Lot one is conforming with this application. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Carpenter. Well, last month we, we rezoned several properties to RS7 so they could have accessory structures. Correct. Where are we now with the three non-conforming laws? Could any of them have one of those accessory structures? And I mean, I'm, what are we doing when we do this? What, what use are we changing Thank for you. the That's what I was trying to, for the unsuccessfully driving it. Well, we're not changing any code use opportunity 
because it's not we're not rezoning the property. Right. This is simply about the shape and size of the lot. Is there the size of the lot? Does that have any bearing on building one of the? Not on the accessory dwelling unit. That's a zoning. That's a district issue. So it's allowed in RS seven, which is why, but okay. but not in RS five. That's why the request last month was from RS five to RS seven. Mm -hmm. They they happen to have double or triple lots, which gave them enough lot area to accommodate RS seven. But if they didn't have that that lot area, we wouldn't be able to support RS5 to RS7. So they just happen to be larger lots, sort of like Lot 1 will become right. here and exceed mm -hmm. the standards of the district it's in. So non, the non-conforming lots right now, they could put in one of the, like the mother-in-law houses that we were talking about last time? No, this is, is this RS? This is RS7. Mm -hmm. RS7, so yes, they could. They, they could, could, even yes. when they're the non-conforming yes. lot size. Okay, that's just a purely a function of the zoning category? It's, the, it's a use issue. Okay, got it. Subject to the having the available space for setbacks. Right. Okay. Yeah, there are some other standards working on something like that, but they would be allowed even on a non-conforming lot. Good question. Commissioner Willie. I guess in my opinion, I think that this uh, does help. It does change it for the better and also helps to uh, support some infill in a, in a neighborhood in, in East Lawrence. So I, I'm, I'm in favor of it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Shall I make a motion? Please do. Right. I welcome it. <laughs> uh, I would make a motion that we approve uh, the variance associated with the minor subdivision of Fairfax edition number two, a minor subdivision replat of lots 188, 189, and 190 of the Fairfax edition, uh, resulting in the variances requested of um, making one from 7,000 square feet to 5743 for lot two and for lot one. Let's see, reducing it from, sorry? Still lot two. Still lot two. Mm -hmm. so, so lot yeah. two only. Do we have two motions here? Nope. Uh, reducing the square footage and also the uh, width from 60 feet to 46 feet. Okay. We have a motion from Commissioner Willie. Is there a second? Commissioner Sands. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving, please raise your hand. All opposed, same sign, 7-0. Motion passes. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, our discussion of our mid-month. Sure, uh, Mr. Chair, if, uh, if you're looking at your bookmarks to the left, you'll, you know the second bookmark is the 2017 mid-month calendar. And we had a good discussion with Commissioner Willie, Vice Chair Willie, on who is the chair of the mid-month meetings about uh, plugging in some, some topics over the next few months to sort of finish out the year. And so we'll be presenting you a revised mid-month calendar um, as I recall, some of those topics that are going to be timely are, are hearing, of course, we have the transportation update for August, and then we also have the comprehensive plan update that I mentioned before. We have affordable housing, which we can share some of the goals of the Affordable Housing Advisory Board with you. We will be completing the retail market study mm -hmm. this year, so that'll be timely to maybe do a mid-month meeting on that. And I think the other one was maybe the, the new county zoning codes that we're hoping to keep moving forward and, and present that to you. So that's gonna be a pretty full plate over the, the next few months. And of course, one of these months, we do the, the full day retreat with the planning commission. So we don't do a mid month meeting in that month. Sometimes we've been known to, to knock off December or something as well to give you a nice holiday gift but uh, that's kind of what we're looking at with Commissioner Willie's direction and so we'll plug that in and get that out with our next packet and then I don't know if she will have the microphone maybe we can talk a little bit about date for the retreat 
a couple of commissioners gave us just one date that worked for them and we were trying to interpret whether or not that was the only date that worked. I think uh, Commissioner Weaver and Sands, we saw one date out of all of them and, and we're hoping you're not that busy. So we just wanted to share with the, maybe the next date with you that worked for everybody else to see if we can arrive at a date sooner rather than later. I thought we were just supposed to give our number one preference. <laughs> ah. So that's my... <coughs> Had I been at the mid month, I probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, but we do have those those mm -hmm. dates we can talk to you about now. Right, and um, yeah, if if you'd had access to the doodle poll, yeah, something didn't work. It didn't, didn't work. Um, I think you probably would have realized. Oh, check everything that works for you. Um, it looks like, with the exception, we still need to hear from. Um, Commissioner Butler and our new Commissioner Payton. Um, but it looks like Friday, October 20th, had um, the ability that everyone um, that we knew of, uh, Commissioner Weaver, we didn't know what your availability was either. Um, but that date seemed to work for everyone. It may not work so well for me, but okay so and I haven't heard back from Randy as well I sent this to him to make sure he would be able to do his um, part on the legal um, <clears throat> info but he usually unless he's gone the entire day is usually able to fit that in so so October 20th, fine by me. I'm good You're with good. the 20th as well. You're good? Okay. So as soon as we hear back from Julia and Aaron. Julia, did I respond that October 20th worked for me? You did. Okay. Does did. it not? It, it doesn't. And I, I don't know why I put that down. I'm going to be out of town that weekend and I'm leaving on Friday the 20th. Okay. Um. Okay. Unless I put it, no, you, you had responded through the poll, so. Okay, well, we will look for more dates because we definitely want to have our newest commissioners um, available. So we may have to look at um, maybe early November dates too. So I can send the poll out and look a little bit further out into the year. We've we've considered usually it's a it's a business day worth of agenda and then a social and the evening. I think we've even maybe even split them up to do like a Wednesday and then a social that weekend yeah. or something. We did so that last year. Maybe we can look maybe other. We can. We had feedback that people really liked the. Friday and then the social right after, but we can certainly look at some other dates. Are there days of the week that are better for anyone, like Wednesday or Thursday or Tuesday? Wednesdays generally for me are awful. That's why awful. I haven't been at the mid months. Okay. Because um, everybody seems to do things between. Everyone wants to. To, to stay away from Mondays because mm -hmm. everyone's trying to get back into the office. So that defaults to Tuesdays through Thursdays because right. no one wants to mess with a person's weekend. Right. So everything happens to land on Tuesday to Thursday. Um, you know, as far as weekend stuff, I work half the weekends of the month. So I appreciate having stuff during the week. Mm -hmm. It's actually because I'm in, in town. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Keep shooting for a Friday, perhaps. I like Friday, Friday. Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you can, for me, I can end my. I don't know. If, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but then I can end my week on Thursday, and then my boss doesn't have the expectation that I come back in until Monday. Mm -hmm. That just works good for me. I think Friday, Friday looks good. So we'll get that out as well. The other thing that we've, we've done usually is um, use the, the vice chair and maybe one other commissioner as a little subcommittee to guide that day's agenda building exercise. So I think we're looking for a volunteer to 
meet a uh, lunch or two with us to work all that out and, and meet with us and work through that agenda. Perhaps a commissioner who's been on for longer than one year. <laughs> Usually it's been a, a tenured commissioner that has been through several that. that has been through several of these to give some guidance, yes. Well that's two people. <laughs> I would be happy to do that. Okay, we'll go from that. Unless some other aged tenured person up here wants to do this stuff. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's your All right. <clears throat> Anything else? All right. Then we are adjourned. <clears throat> oh, while we've been sitting here, our governor resigned. What? What? Hey. To take a position as ambassador at large for international religious freedom with the U.S. State Department. We have one of those? Oh, well, we do now. Hey. Sam Brown back. Remember, the microphones are still on. <laughs>